So I wanted to talk, I'm not going to talk real long. Um, I'm not paying attention to when the game is on today. If anybody knows, if I'm, if I'm interrupting the World Series, I'm not sure. I haven't been paying attention to what time it's on today. Um, so guys, forgive me if, if I'm interrupting the World Series. Um, <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about meditation just because uh, it's one of those things where, you know, people are always asking me about how to improve their intuition. That's, you know, obviously the number one question I get. And um, the answer is always the same, and it's meditation. Um, a lot of people groan and wish that there was some way around the whole issue of having to meditate. But, um, but meditation is, is it's really good for you, and it's not as difficult as people think. Um, it's just a really a matter of learning what works best for you. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it. <laughs> um, and honestly, there's nothing that's going to improve your intuition more than um, meditation. So meditation is hugely important for those of you who really want to improve your, your intuition skills. Uh, practice, obviously, is the second, second most important issue, but... Um, Starting a meditation practice every day is, is, even if it's for five minutes, is hugely helpful. So my secret, uh, I'll tell you a couple of my secrets. One is when I set my snooze alarm in the morning, rather than going back to sleep, I will actually sit up and go ahead and start meditating uh, while the snooze is on. So um, that's one trick. I always tell people, not to try to meditate while you're laying down because you'll just fall asleep. So um, it's never a great idea to try to meditate while you're laying down. I don't recommend that. Um, unless you're trying to go to sleep at night, then go for it. <laughs> um, but, you know, some people believe that in order to meditate, you have to be able to clear your mind completely. And um, while that's a fabulous um, goal and um, has a lot of health benefits and whatnot. Um, there are ways to meditate that are, especially for beginners, that are just as good for you um, and will open you up intuitively just as well. So uh, for me, I, you know, um, I think I've said this before, but I struggle with attention issues. So I was diagnosed with ADD, and so meditation was really, really difficult for me to master. So trust me, if I can do it, you guys can do it too. Um, one of the things that helped me, especially in the very beginning when I was learning, was guided meditation because it gave you something to listen to and just follow along. There's a lot of good my, guided meditation things out there. I have some resources on my website. If you go to the resources page, I think a lot of people don't realize I have some of that stuff on there. If you go to the resources page, um, I have a whole list of, of free guided meditation links for you there. Um, so that's one of, the, one of the best ways when you're starting out is just to follow along with uh, guided meditation and that will get you sort of going in the right direction. Um, when you go, hi Barbara, uh, hello, good to see you. When you, um, when you get beyond that, um, that stage where you're pretty, pretty good at, at following along and, um, doing guided meditations, then you can progress to maybe doing your sanctuary, which I've talked about before, where you create this space, this sort of sacred space. Those who were in my spirit class uh, last month learned about creating a sanctuary, which is sort of a um, your own special sacred spot where you go and um, you converse with your guides. And um, But you can also go there just to relax and, um, you know, meditate on peace and happiness and sometimes getting answers from your guides. It's a, it's a really great practice. So 
um, that I recommend if you don't know about. I really I'm gonna I'm gonna create a um, a video on how to how to create your sanctuary and post that on my website here pretty soon. So if you don't know how to do a sanctuary, uh, that's coming. Okay. Um, and then um, also. Um, Barbara, you're gonna to have to um, you're gonna to have to shoot me a note and let me know if you got puppies. So uh, later. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so after you um, are good at creating a sanctuary, and you can go there, of course, anytime you want. Um, the other way, the one of my favorite ways to meditate is to. Um, what they call empty the mind. And I learned this at the Buddhist temple. I used to go to the temple and, and um, they gave me some training on how to um, count your breath. So it's really not as difficult as people think. Um, I think the reason some people get frustrated and give up on meditation sometimes is because uh, thoughts come up in their head and then they want to fight with those thoughts and sort of struggle with it. And you really don't have to, um, you don't have to fight it. You don't have to struggle. You're not failing at meditating if thoughts are popping up into your head. The whole thing is that you let them bubble up and let them go. So it's okay that thoughts are kind of popping up in your head. Um, you just don't follow them. So I like the analogy of, of a leaf, um, falling into the river and flowing downstream. So you just let the, let the leaf go downstream. You don't have to chase it. So, um, so there's no need to get frustrated or upset if you have thoughts that are kind of coming up into your mind. Um, you just let them come up and then you just keep going. So, um, so for me, uh, how I like to do is count every breath. So every inhale is one and exhale is one. Inhale two, exhale two. And you do that all the way up to nine. And then uh, you just reverse the process and go from nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, and you just continue that process, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine counting uh, each inhale and exhale. And every time a thought bubbles up, it's fine. You just let the thought go and go back to the counting. Um, as many times as it takes, you just go back to the counting. And what you'll find if you stick with this practice, uh, hi Pamela, um, what you'll find is that eventually you will um, stop counting and you'll find yourself in this this amazing place of bliss so um that's pretty cool when you actually get to that to that uh to that space so it can happen um like i said you have to practice and for me it doesn't have to be a super long uh what they call a sit um sometimes for me i'll just do you know, five, 10 minutes in the morning and five or 10 minutes in the evening. And um, even just that small amount can make a huge difference for you in your health and in your, in your life. So I highly recommend it. Um, like I said, I know a lot of people groan and wish that there was a way to sort of avoid, avoid it, but it really is, feels good once you get into the practice of it. I feel sort of off center and out of sorts when I don't meditate in the morning. Um, I sort of feel like I forgot to brush my teeth or something. Um, so hopefully uh, you guys will get into the practice of meditating. And like I said, this, this is the number one thing for um, improving your intuition because you have to be able to control um, your mind. You have to be able to um, get control of your what we call monkey mind. You have to be able to get control of your mind in order to let impressions come in and get yourself out of the way. 
So um, that's the benefit of learning how to meditate. Okay, so do you guys have any questions for me? Um, if you tuned in late, the answer to my Halloween quiz was Black Widow. <laughs> uh, breathing technique, is that to remain focused? Yes, it's exactly it. Um, it's to give you something to keep your focus. So. Uh, which is huge for me. I have to have something that keeps my focus. So not only just counting one through nine and then backwards, um, counting each breath actually takes a little bit of concentration, and that's the, that's the point of it. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Um, so, and you might not get to that place of bliss where you, where you just realize you're not counting anymore and you're just um, in that place. Um, and if that happens, that's fine. You know, you're still, you're, still, um, you're still controlling your thoughts by counting your breath. So, um, so it's, still, it's still really good for you because it's still helping you manage, uh, manage your monkey mind. Um, you're very welcome. I know a lot of people struggle with this and, um, and everybody, you know, gets told that you should meditate and then there's, you know, so many people that just really struggle with it. So I think really it's a matter of understanding it when, um, you don't feel like you have to sit down and you're going to fail at emptying your mind. Um, it certainly becomes a lot more fun. <laughs> um, and honestly, guided meditations are really nice. They're wonderful. Uh, you can find some cool ones on YouTube. Like I said, I'm getting ready to make one for you guys soon, but um, I think Deepak Chopra has some pretty nice ones up on YouTube. And they're easy to follow. Um, you just listen and follow along. It's a really great place to start if you've never tried to meditate at all. Um, you got the black right. Yes. Well, and I have a black cat, so that counts. And he's um, he's been uh, following me around the house all day, so maybe you guys are picking up on my black cat uh, or the witch. I used to make a joke about being a witch because I have a black cat and a, I drive a stick. So <laughs> it used to be my favorite joke. I, I must really like black. I have a black car. I have a black dog and a black cat. So, um, so there you go. You're on to something there. <laughs> uh, somebody had guessed a PI, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, and like I said, I had tried really hard to figure out how to be the right shark in um, the Katy Perry video, but just could not figure that one out. Uh, yes, using the web for guided meditation, I know. Um, but there are some really great, there's some really great, uh, some really great meditations already up there on YouTube that you can find. And just find one, you know, everybody's got their own, you know, that's the thing is everybody's sort of got their own style. And so just check a few of them out. If, if you find, you know, and this, um, and I'm, I'm sort of laughing, but I don't mean to be funny, but you know, some of them really resonate with me. I find them super peaceful super easy to follow along. Some of them I find really um, annoying. So you just, um, everybody's sort of got their personal style. So find the one that resonates for you, with you, um, and just, you know, start there. And then, um, like I said, you know, once you really get good at following the guided meditations, then, um, then you can even practice doing them on your own. Once you sort of know the routine from a guided meditation, you can practice doing it on your own without having somebody tell you. Um, and that's a, good, that's a good second step for those of you. Um, that's sort of one of the steps that I, that I took. But I did a lot of meditating when I was learning to visualize. Um, so I would just practice 
viewing certain things. I think it was Deborah Katz that taught me about how to improve some of my uh, clairvoyance when I was meditating. And that was like to visualize a rose, um, a white rose. And then in your mind's eye, turn it another color, like let it turn pink. And then visualize it turning yellow. And then visualize it turning red. And then let it turn any color it wants to. Um, those kinds of exercises keep your mind busy because you're still controlling your thoughts. They're not just random thoughts about dishes you left in the sink. Um, and so that's a good way to practice too, is to have some sort of uh, focus. So I think that's one of the things that people don't really understand about meditation is that meditation is not necessarily always just about clearing your mind. It's about focus. For me, it's a really intense focus. And the work that I do is really intense focus. That's why I tell people it takes so much energy to do the work that I do because it takes such um, intense focus and discipline. Um, so Sherry, meditating to relax, intuition kicked in, overdrive and it scared you. Um, having a difficult time getting over your fear. So just know that your intuition is there for you to help you. Um, some people will get things that scare, scare them. Um, but sometimes if you get something negative or something you perceive as negative, um, it's still there to protect you. It's to, to, um, to give you a heads up if something negative is about to happen or uh, to help you ward off something maybe. Um, so, neg you know, so intuition's, intuition's your friend, it truly, truly is your friend. I understand about being afraid of it because it was really scary for me in the beginning too. Um, just the content of what I was getting was always really scary. But, um, but you know, remember too that if you're seeing something uh, from the past, like in a crime scene, just remember that these things can't hurt you because they've already happened. Um, you're just viewing something that's already in the past, so it can't hurt you. Um, so do remember that. And that any messages that come are truly, truly from, for your benefit. Um, if it's your guides giving you that information. Uh, since I meditate regularly in the morning, do I find it easier to lie down or sit? Definitely sit. Um, even if I'm laying down, like I said, if, if I, if I, what I do is I set my snooze alarm, I hit my snooze alarm and then I sit up, uh, in the meditating position, still in bed. I just sit there in the meditating position and then I, um, meditate, um, for the snooze eight minutes or whatever it is. Um, so most people, if they lay down, will fall asleep if they're trying to meditate laying down. So yes, that's totally normal. <laughs> um, unless you're trying to at night and you can't go to sleep. And of course, then we forget to meditate to help us go to sleep. But um, if you're having trouble going to sleep at night, meditating is a really great, great idea. Um, so yeah, uh, Tasso, of course, that's um, quieting the mind is not, you know, it's, giving the mind something to do. If you can think of it as that, instead of thinking about quieting the mind, if you can think of it as giving your mind something to do, um, that will help. So, cause a lot of times it's just a perception thing. So giving your mind something to keep it busy, um, is the same thing as kind of quieting the random thoughts that fly through our heads all the time. So um, that's why counting your breath in and out is, um, is a good way or following a guided meditation again, because it's giving you something to focus on. So it's not so much just quieting your mind. It's, it's intense focus on something, um, which helps. When I was, when I was younger, I took, uh, it's interesting because when, you know, I've always had monkey mind since I was a kid. Um, but, 
when I was younger, I took dance lessons. And I always found dance lessons really relaxing, and I couldn't figure out why until I realized that, that the entire hour I was in dance class um, in ballet, if anybody's ever taken it, um, it requires really intense focus. You just can't be thinking about other stuff. You have to stay totally focused. And I found it super relaxing and healing um, to be in there because it, it had that uh, feature about it. So, um, so it's the same idea of anything that um, requires your entire focus. Uh, what about the future? Can the, can the future we see be changed? Uh, doesn't often feel that way. Um, well, yes, absolutely, because um, we humans have free will. And uh, when I do readings to tell people, uh, I see potentials and probabilities. Um, not, I don't believe that the future's totally set in stone. I do think that um, that what we're tuning into are, are probabilities. So, um, yes, you can change your track if you are uh, if you're on a track that isn't right going well you can change tracks at any time um, so once the random thoughts are controlled uh, which is uh, the end goal of the yes how do you know you are getting it doing it right focus um, really because you're at that point where you're not thinking about um, something somebody said to you yesterday or whether your dishes are um, done or if you forgot to turn off a light or um, did you pay that bill if you're not having this random uh, all these random thoughts flying through your head that you don't have any control over that's when you know you've succeeded so hopefully um, you're welcome hopefully uh, that makes sense Barbara it's really just um, quieting. So when I say quieting the mind, I guess I guess what it means is quieting those uncontrolled thoughts that we all have. Um, if we all just stopped and paid attention to the, all the thoughts that go through our head in a matter of you know three minutes, it's amazing. <laughs> it's kind of amazing um, and total relaxation. It's it's it's. I think that's why I like meditating is sort of a break from all the mental noise that's going on in my head all the time. Um, it sort of feels like a nice little vacation, a little head vacation. <laughs> feels like a little head vacation. So, um, so that's really the key. Like I said, it's, it's not, most of us are not going to get into this perfect place of bliss um, and nothingness though. I, I've been there. Um, I don't get there every day when I'm meditating. And some days it's easier than others. Some days I struggle the whole time um, to keep my mind and try to stay on with the counting. Um, I'll just struggle with it. I'll count the number and then I'll have a thought. I'll count the number and I'll have a thought. I'll count the number and have a thought. I just keep going back to the numbers, keep going back to the breathing. Um, and some days are just like that. Some days I just have a harder time with it. And then other days um, I seem to get into the groove a lot easier. So um, so keep in mind that too, is that some days, you know, it's going to be, some days it's going to be easier and some days it's going to be more challenging, depending on your stress levels probably. Um, so any other questions? You guys are doing great. Any other questions? Um, so hopefully this helps. Hopefully you guys have a little better understanding um, of what meditation really is because um, it's, it's not as scary and intimidating as, as you might think. And it really can be fun. Um, I love going to my sanctuary. I really, really enjoy going to my sanctuaries. You know, it's like going on vacation. Even if it's for five minutes, uh, it feels wonderful. 
Uh, so many times things pop in your mind and don't meditate. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's intuition. Um, things that randomly pop into your head when you're doing something else, like the dishes or shower or driving. That's intuition. Um, it's definitely intuition, and it definitely can be accurate. And why it comes in is because your mind is busy doing something else. Your mind's busy doing this chore, so the intuition can sneak in around your um, mind chatter. Happens to, uh, happens to most of us. I get some really great insights when I'm not trying sometimes. Um, thanks, Barbara. Yeah, sometimes when we, the more we struggle, the more, uh, the more difficult it is to, um, to let your intuition flow. And so that's why we're having this discussion about meditation. Hi, Amy. Um, okay, any other questions about or struggles that you guys have had? around this whole subject. You know, it's it's one of those things where you have to just try it, or at least commit to trying it for, um, for a week or something and see if you really do feel better. I know that I feel better. If I start my day off meditating, I feel better. I feel more grounded during the entire day. So it really, really makes a difference for me. Um, you're welcome. So yeah, don't don't um, don't just count those thoughts that fly in randomly out of nowhere while your mind's busy doing something else. Um, it truly is intuition, but it, but the reason for that is because your mind's busy, and um, and it's not uh, interfering. Because Lord knows we all argue with our intuition, right, guys? <laughs> uh, that's that's why it has to sneak around our defenses because we all argue with it. Um, committing to practice, yep. Even if it's just a week. Um, so as far as psychic attack, you know, here's my here's you know this is going to be probably surprising for some of you, but um, I know other people have different beliefs around it. And I, um, my theory is because I have free will, I don't allow psychic attacks, period. Um, and um, psychic intrusions and remote influencing and all of these things that you hear about. Um, I have free will, and my free will tells me that I'm totally in control of my own spirit. Um, and so I don't allow it. Um, if I ever feel like somebody's trying to to influence me or bother me, um, simple question. So the simple answer is call in Archangel Michael, and that will take care of that. Um, so that's my answer on that. <laughs> that if you ever feel like you have a problem, call Archangel Michael, and that will uh, that will handle that. Because we all have free will, and when you say no, uh, absolutely not. I am not going to be a victim. Um, then you won't be. So I had to learn that, and um, I'm very strong in that conviction, and I had to learn that because of the work I was doing, a lot of crime work and, and um, encountering some dark, uh, dark energies and, and um, some, you know, pretty negative humans. So, um, so I'm very strong in my conviction of... Uh, um, keeping my energy clear and in the light and not allowing any of that kind of kind of interference. Okay, hopefully that helps, Julian. Um, it's really about taking control of yourself and taking control of your psychic space. Just like you take care of your physical space, you can take care of your psychic space. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, and like I said, if you have trouble, Archangel Michael will come along and, and fix that for you. Um, all right, guys. So um, 
So let me know if you have any other questions and then we'll, we'll say good night. Um, thanks you guys for all the great questions. All right. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Well, thank you for coming and showing up and asking great questions. And I really do hope it helps. And I hope that you guys will all sort of like, you know, make a commitment to, to what if we make November like, um, especially since we're going into the holidays, what if we make November, uh, if we all make a commitment that we're going to meditate, uh, even if it's five minutes in the morning, every day in the month of November. I would love to see that from you guys. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, thanks, Brett. Hello. So it's a deal, okay? So um, so those of you who really want to um, to improve, you can make a commitment, and we will uh, we will all meditate for five ten minutes at least every morning uh, during the month of November, which is a great thing to do because we're going into the holidays and things start getting kind of kind of hectic. Yes, five minutes a day. It's a done deal. Um, perfect. Uh, in for November. Cool. Very good. Uh, you guys, you guys will thank me. I swear you will thank me. Um, and we'll check in. We'll check in the middle of the month and see how it's going to. Um, if not next week, but I'll check in with you guys and see see how it's going. But um, you guys will be thank. You'll be thanking me when we get to December, I promise. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Thank you, and I will talk to you all later. Hope you guys had a great weekend and have a fun and safe um, Halloween. <laughs>